So my first online race in Le Mans Ultimate was a complete disaster, but I'm back today to give it a second chance, and that's all thanks to you guys. So many of you got in touch to reassure me that I was just incredibly unlucky to have the bad experience I did in that first race, and I'm really grateful to all of you who took the time to get in touch. And there's more good news too. The driver who deliberately ruined that race for so many other people has already been banned. So it's really encouraging to see the LMU team take such swift and decisive action. Now, of course, it was a rookie server. You always expect to see mistakes, spins and crashes. And I've got no problem with that at all, as long as they're honest mistakes. What we saw the other day, there was nothing honest about it. It was deliberate wrecking. And that's why I was so frustrated after the race. It's certainly not the simple fault you can't blame the sim for the bad behavior of one individual driver so with that in mind I'm back to give the race another try now I've actually gone a fair bit quicker in this one in qualifying I managed a lap time of 218 flat that's nearly two seconds faster than the fastest lap I managed in the first race so things are looking really promising here I'll be starting from p9 on a grid of 20 will this race be any better than the first one let's find out well, it all kicked off in T1 last time, so let's hope it's a little bit cleaner today. I am in a fair amount of space. These faster rolling starts in LMU do tend to spread out the pack a little bit more. There's a Ferrari out on the gravel to the left. That's Javi Valero, so I'm going to stay right just to give him the space to rejoin. Oh, no! Valero must have lost control just as he got back on track. He came across almost horizontally, and there was nowhere for me to go. I've been taken out, and we rejoin right at the back of the pack. What a disaster. Disastrous start to my second race here at Spa. I knew Valero would need space on the left to rejoin, so I kept as far right as I could, but I'm guessing Valero just lost control on the curb and speed into me. So I'm down to 18th. Oh, and the two Ferraris in front, both well down on speed. That almost caught me out. I had to weave my way through, and it looks like it did catch out Ho Kit behind because he has crashed out spectacularly there. Right, let's check out the replay to see if we can get to the bottom of just what caused Javi Valero to take me out coming out of T1. Now, I held quite a tight line into the source, and it was at this point I saw the Ferrari out wide on the gravel. Now, I knew Valero needed to rejoin at some point, so I stayed over to the right, but it wasn't enough. Valero loses control on the grass, slides across track horizontally, and takes me out. On board with Valero now. P3 on the grid. That's the pole sitter, Andreas Eisman, in front of him. Now, Valero's got a really good start here. He's in the middle, three wide. Iceman on the right, Sabo Maloto on the left but he's just going to run in a bit too hot into T1. That sends him out onto the gravel. Now he's picking up speed here. He's just about to rejoin. And at the last possible moment, he loses control. And there's the contact with me. So really unfortunate. But like I said at the start of the video, I've got no problem at all with honest mistakes. And that's exactly what that one was. Now we almost had another catastrophe at the start of the Camel Straight. I was really caught out by just how slow those two Ferraris were going. I managed to weave my way through, but Ho oh, Kit wasn't so lucky and I didn't realize how close I came to being taken out there. Let's watch it again on board with Kit. Then it's Valero again in the yellow Ferrari. In fairness to him, I think he was just trying to get out of my way, but in doing so, he completely closed the door on Kit. Kit had nowhere to go, slides right across track into the barrier and misses me by inches. Well, so many of my recent online races are following the same pattern. I get collected in turn one and then I spend the rest of the race trying to salvage as many positions as I can. Now, I rejoined in 18th, but I'm already up to 16th. I got past both Wolfman and Javi Valera on the Kemmel straight, but the gap to the next driver in front, Simon Oles, is eight seconds. Or is it? Because there's been another accident. Well, that looks like Axel Roblin in the Corvette, who's come to grief at Puon. He's back on track now, but well down on power. So I'm able to breeze by and move back into the top 15. So I'm making progress already here. And as soon as I got bumped onto the grass coming out of T1, I immediately started looking for new goals to set. The first one was to fight my way back into the top 15. Well, I've done that within half a lap. So the next logical goal has to be the top 10. There's still 14 minutes of the race left and it looks like we may get another position straight away because there is an Aston Martin in the barrier to the left. That was Dominic Reinisch. And Ryan Farrell not happy in race chat either. We're actually gaining on him really quickly now. So maybe Farrell was involved in that incident as well. And possibly good for Rowe too because Rowe has dropped to P13 now right in front of me and I'm within two seconds of him as we approach the final chicane to end lap one. Farrell into the 
the pits. So that'll be another position game. Rose lost in exit in the final chicane. That'll be another position game. We're up into P12. So a really eventful second half to that opening lap. Let's go back and check out the highlights to see how we gained those positions. Starting with Axel Robin's mistake going into Poo and he just loses control. Oh, he takes Ryan Farrell with him. That might have been where Farrell picked up the damage that forced him to pit. And then a few corners later, we lost the Aston Martin of Dominic Reinisch. That's Gunther Rowe in the red Ferrari trying to squeeze through the middle, tags the front of that Aston and sends him hard into the barrier. But then at the very next corner, it's going to be Rowe himself who comes to grief. He's trying to swing it around the outside of his fellow Ferrari driver, Edward Gonfier, but he doesn't leave enough room. If you are going to try the overtake around the outside at Blanchemont, you can go for the apex, particularly when the driver you're overtaking is still there on the inside. It was bound to end in tears and then it got worse for Rowe because as he exits the final chicane he just lights up the rear loses control again and that's what gives me 12th position well Rowe certainly isn't the first driver to make that mistake and he won't be the last either in fact I made the exact same mistake in my first race earlier this week now uh, we're approaching one third race distance I'm still in P12 but I am closing in on Lodovico Valerani in P11 the gap though is still more than three seconds so I've got a bit of work to do yet in the meantime I'm going to get another position we said about that mistake coming out of the final chicane well another driver has made it Flo Biederick has spun out yeah Biederick actually got past Lodovico Valerani earlier in the lap he just pulls out to the inside approaching the end of the Camel straight here he's not quite close enough to make the pass however Valerani just runs in a little bit too hot and loses the rear. That promotes Biebrick up into P10, but he doesn't stay there for long. At the end of the lap, he makes the mistake that so many of us have made. Lighten up the rears once again and ends up facing in the wrong direction. Now, credit where credit's due to Florian Biebrick here. He doesn't rejoin dangerously. He knows there's other cars coming, so he waits patiently until there's a safe gap to get back on track. Great etiquette from Biebrick there. So that's me up into P11 and we're rejoining the live action as we approach half race distance. I'm within two seconds now of the cars in front and thankfully Lodovico Valerani is applying all sorts of pressure on Simon Oles ahead of him. These two are surely going to slow each other down. In fact, Valerani making a move up the inside of Oles into Lecum there and he makes the pass. So Valerani up into P9, Oles down to 10th and he was forced wide through that section there. He's even wider now out onto the gravel. So this is a golden opportunity for me to close right in. That two second advantage has been wiped out. We are right on the tail of Oles now. When I said a couple of laps ago that the top 10 has to be my new goal, well I'm now within 0.7 of a second of it. But I also know that I've got a fair bit more pace than Oles too. He started down in P14 on the grid. His qualified time was a 219.5, so that's nearly one and a half seconds slower than me. This might be an opportunity because he's wide into Puon. I'm going to try and use my momentum to get up the inside into this up coming right hander but Oles defends with everything he's got he slams the door shut there and I had to back out of that one pretty urgently well it was a bit of a gamble to try and get alongside him to the right there but I just ran out of room and had to abort but no problem we've still got seven minutes on the clock so plenty of time to try and make a move on Oles here once again we're carrying a lot more speed as we come up onto this back part of the circuit can I engineer a pass here or is Oles going to defend again yes he closes the sideline off so I've got no choice but to go wide into Blanchemont now we saw this ending disaster earlier so I'm not going to make the same mistake I'm going to leave it a little bit wider and in fact there's no room to stay alongside so again I have to back out again Oles defends into this final chicane he might have run in a bit too hot there he has this could be another opportunity I'll try the switch back can I get on the gas early and pull alongside Oles as we charge down the start finish straight I've got the pace I'm alongside but will I get far enough ahead I don't think I will Oles is going to have the inside line for the saucer once again. I've got to back out. Oh, there's almost contact too. That's going to cost me a bit of exit speed. That'll give Oles a bit of breathing room. Probably a tenth or two he'll gain from that. But this is much more like it. I wanted a good, clean and hard online battle and I have found it with Simon Oles. Once again, I've got the better line through Oberouge and Radlon. I'm going to have more speed down the Kemmel straight. Can I make it count now? Oles we know is going to defend. Sure enough he moves over to the right once again I pull alongside to the left but the odds are against me making the pass into Lake Kumir. I'm just not far enough alongside so yet again I have to back out and tuck back in behind the Aston Martin 
But as good as this battle is, it's also frustrating too because it's slowing me down and it's allowing the two cars in front of us to make a break for it. A lot of Eco Valorani and Edward Gonfier are clearing off. Now I know I'm quicker than those two as well. The pair of them were actually further down the grid than Oles. Well, both of them are capitalising on this fight and making a break for it, making eighth and ninth position a bit more secure. Meanwhile, we can't rule out a challenge from behind as well. Bieberick in the rearview mirror is closing in fast. He'll be seeing this battle and fancy getting involved. Meanwhile, Oles makes exactly the same mistake as he did a lap ago. Now, I know not to go for the inside this time, so I'll go straight for the outside and try and apply pressure. Maybe I can force him into running too deep. I have done. There is half a gap on the inside. It's not big enough for me to squeeze through, but we're putting him under real pressure. Now, Oles, will he crack? The later entry here may allow me to cut up the inside and get on the gas early on, but I've made a mistake. The rear steps out onto the grass and I have lost it. Well, I was trying to make Oles crack. I ended up cracking myself on. I've made a right hash of the region and I'm going to have to wait for these two cars to go by before I can get back on track safely and I find myself down in P13. Well, I was trying everything I possibly could to find a way past Simon Oles there. In the end, I tried just a little bit too hard. I was applying real pressure through this section. There was half a gap on the inside, but the pass wasn't really on. So I decided just to continue applying pressure, get as close as I possibly could. And then for this right-hander, I thought a later entry may give me a faster exit. But no, the rear steps out. I'm onto the grass, and as soon as I'm onto the grass, I can't save it. But that was a fantastic battle, really enjoyable racing with Oles there. I've got no regrets at all about pushing as hard as I could to try and get that top 10 place. Ultimately, I pushed a little bit too hard, but I'm not going to grumble. I'd rather have a P13 and a great fight like that than the P4 I got earlier in the week when all those positions were gifted to me. So we're rejoining the live action at the very last corner. I had no chance of getting any positions back. Gunther Rowe was the nearest driver in P12, but he was more than 10 seconds clear. So I coasted home to take the checkered flag in P13. Well, the other day I saw the worst of online racing. Today, I've enjoyed the best of it. I'll give my first thoughts on LMU as a sim shortly, but first the classified results. There I am down in P13, but look at that fastest lap, a 218.1. That was certainly quick enough to be higher up the order as far up as seventh ando west managed a 218.9 so i really could have challenged for a top six here had i not been involved in that first corner collision so all in all this was a much better race sure it was a fairly disastrous start for me but like i said at the beginning of the video i've got no problem at all with being taken out in a rookies race if it's an honest mistake which that one certainly was after that i had a great battle with oles and i've only got myself to blame for not finishing in the top 10 but i'm far happier to finish 13th after having had a clean and fair battle rather than finishing higher because the rest of the grid have been taken out which is exactly what we saw the other day so what are my early impressions of Le Mans Ultimate now I've had a more enjoyable race? Well, it's decent. It really is. Spa looks great. The cars sound fantastic and the physics feel really good. I can only echo what other YouTubers have said. If you like the R Factor 2 feel, you'll like this. Sure, there are plenty of bugs and glitches that still need fixing. Navigating settings menus in online lobbies is worryingly slow, which makes it a challenge to even do the simple things like adjusting fuel. I've also encountered a few stutters and freezes too, which you may have noticed in the last two videos. Hopefully these issues will all be ironed out before the sim gets its full release. Let's not forget this is still in early access. But does it offer enough to keep me interested? Well that will depend on the development of the multiplayer rank system. I don't race very often but when I do I always prefer the challenge of online sim racing. If LMU can offer a decent online proposition in the finished game with seasons, rankings, stewarding and most importantly high participation then I'll say Certainly be sticking around for more. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts on Le Mans Ultimate and what you want to get out of it. But most of all, thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the grid again very soon.